Uh, I had an email uh, yesterday from someone asking me to talk about anger. So I thought I'd talk about anger, because uh, I'm good at that. Um, I had a, a lifetime of rage. Not just rage, <laughs> but rage with several, R, uh, several A's. Um, and of course, it's this latent energy. A lot of people suffer with anger, or if they don't, if they don't express their anger, they suffer with um, the illnesses uh, that suppressed anger can create. When I was younger, um, I had a very, very powerful anger, um, and I used to be quite perversely proud of my anger. When my temper went, you know, uh, I'd smash up the house or I'd smash up people later. When I was a doorman, I'd smash up people. And of course, people struggle to see that in me now, um, and they imagine that it's not there. But of course, it is there, it's just an energy. And I've just um, learned to use it better. So, energy is a, a, anger is one of the shapes we make with energy. Normally, anger, when you know the sense of anger is that it's uh, it's a displaced emotion. It's something that comes out against our will, or it's something that people use um, to hurt other people with. It's uh, I wouldn't say it's the first level of violence, but it's a level of violence. So I know lots of people who use anger to hurt people, to damage people. It, anger is sound. When it's expressed, it's sound. It's vibration. So if I use um, heka or magic sound or magic words um, in an angry way I can damage people, I can damage their constitution, I can damage their psyche, I can damage their beliefs just by taking the energy and creating a certain sound. So when we talk about anger, um, uh, especially when I was younger if I talked about it as being a powerful you know, emotion I, and I was proud of it because I was a, um, obviously because I was a bit ignorant you know, I'd say, oh, you know, people would say, oh, Jeff's a nice guy, but God, he's got an anger, he's got a temper. And I would say, yeah, I've got a real temper. Be careful of me, because I've got a real temper. And when that temper went, it was delicious. It tasted, felt delicious. Felt like a release, but it was just a waste. It's just like wanking into a tissue and throwing away seminal energy. And it was a waste even more so because it left, it, you know, there was no control, there was no sovereignty there. So the key is being able to feel that energy, feel that emotion, but be able to control it, contain it, and deliver it. And not think of a temper or anger as being powerful or being a good thing. So lots of the guys I know who have got tempers are perversely proud of that because they can get their own way with their temper. Their wife doesn't want sex, so they bully them, they bully their wife. Uh, the, again, one of the levels of violence by being angry, slamming doors, being moody, um, and using their temper to get their own way. I've, I've sat in the room with people who have got big tempers, and you can feel the room quaking with the potential for these people to explode. And you can tell that these people quietly like that, but it's actually a great weakness. Because if we make people afraid, it's because we're insecure. When I made people afraid, it was because I was scared. It's because I was insecure. I wasn't at my best when I was a violent, aggressive man. I was at my weakest. I was an insecure shadow coming out, trying to protect the weaker part of me or the vulnerable part of me from abuse. So my temper, my rage, came from dissonance, from confusion, from abuse, from vulnerability. Um, uh, it came from a complete lack of control, because when it came out, it burst out. Um, and I used to think people were, people liked that about me. I, th I used to think people liked the fact that I was angry. But actually, anger expressed as anger, emotion expressed as anger is ugly. It makes you very ugly, makes you very unattractive. It makes people afraid of you. So I'd like to look at it like we imagine that we're a, we are a conduit or a hose or um, a tabernacle, um, an outlet, a pipe, something that 
uh, delivers energy. Um, and if that energy spills out and we don't control it, it comes out through a negative cognition or a negative perception, then we could say that it's anger or rage and it damages people. And it's not only that it's wasted, it's obviously anger brings great profit. It brings more, it brings consequences and the consequences of anger are very rarely any good. So when I was angry, I would upset people and scare people as a consequence to that. Um, so what I want to do with my energies and with my anger, which I've, again, I've, I've had a lifetime of it, is take that anger and instead of creating fearful people around me and violent situations um, and negative karma, I take that energy um, and I bring it along an aligned, virtuous con uh, conduit when I say virtuous, I mean it's working from an ethical and a moral uh, alignment. It's aligned to love, it's aligned to service. And I take that anger, I break the anger down into its constituent parts, so it ends up as fluid energy, and then I deliver it into a book, or a play, or a talk. Um, I could deliver it, if I can break it down into this energy into its liquid component, malleable parts, I can use that energy for healing. I can deliver a punch with it. I can deliver a book with it. I can deliver a keynote speech with it. I can keep very quiet and very silent and just have it contained inside me as a vibrant energy ready to move. I can use it to climb a mountain. I can use it to create a physical reality, a manifest reality. I can do anything I want. If I allow it to spill, I do damage and I lose energy. The moment I engage anger, I feed anger. The moment I express anger, I've given it a feast. That anger goes out, it's maybe a day or a week's worth of energy that I've collected, seminal energy that I've built up, essence that's just been wasted and it brings back no positive profit. So what turned me around from not being angry was that when I was angry I thought it was uh, a strength, I thought it was an attribute and then of course I realised that anger is a weakness, it's just a leak, it's a lack of integrity. So if I've got a break in the conduit the integrity is threatened, so it's a lack of integrity um, and there's no power there. If we can't hold our temper, if we can't hold our energy then we're not sovereigns of the self. So anybody on a spiritual quest has to learn to be able to not so much hold anger in, but be able to watch anger rise, be able to observe it without identification, observe it without uh, feeding it, observe it without engaging it and just watch this energy and decide uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to observe this energy and I'm going to calm this energy back down and I'm going to break it down into its component parts just by recognising that it is an energy and I can make any shape I want to make with it. Then I'm going to deliver it into something I want to deliver it into. For me at the moment it's delivering it, in, delivering it into stage plays. If you take all this rage and this anger and you contain it and you deliver it into a piece of work, it can be a beautiful creation that can positively affect millions of people. So that's alchemy. Alchemy is the ability to contain, it is to recognise energy, contain energy, um, herd energy and deliver energy down a specific pipeline. So we create a corridor that we put our energy in. If the energy spills, especially if you have abilities like I've got, um, you know, obviously the, the ability to kill people with physical techniques, because I've trained for 40 years to do that. So I understand the notion um, of using energy to heal and using energy to harm, using energy to give life, using energy to end life. I have no, there is not a single part of me that is going to use my energy to hurt anybody. Not even the people who consider themselves to be my enemy. I don't need that kind of energy, I don't need contact. All I need is to contain that energy and be present with that energy, convert that energy, that energy into pure love and my enemies won't be able to stand in my company. 
they won't be able to stand in the same frequency as me. The air will be too thin because I've contained it and I've controlled it and I'm sovereign over it. So for me, my practice started to be um, when I'm in the car, I'm, I'm not going to be triggered by road rage. If somebody insults me on the internet or through a letter or through an email or in the street, I'm going to be able to contain my energy. I'm going to be able to control myself. Otherwise, you're just a puppet. You have no power at all. You're just a puppet. Someone just gives you a little prod or a little pull and you spew your energy out and you waste your energy. Do you see people on the internet all the time, on the forums, just spewing away essence? The feeling that they have to attack somebody, the feeling that somebody has to defend themselves, the feeling that they have to have this confrontation, just where energy spunked into the air, just energy wasted, just a fucking waste. It's just a complete waste. It's amateur. That's below my game. Except sometimes it's not below my game. Sometimes the same as everybody else. Sometimes I make a mistake. Recently, um, on a tired day, on a stressed day, on a day where my energy was breaking out, my integrity was threatened, I let my temper go and you could, I could fucking strip paint with it. It was a hugely volatile and scathing energy when I let it go. It fritted everybody around me. And I obviously had to make my apologies and said, I'm having a bad day. Please accept my apologies. I didn't push any blame. But it's just to say that even on your best day, even at your highest development, this can still happen. Gandhi was still making mistakes with his energy and with his essence at the peak of his game. Mandela had moments of mad temper when things overtook him because he was containing so much energy. Jesus of Nazareth, Joshua, Ben Miriam, the Christ, had moments of tipping tables. Muhammad had moments of, you know, mad anger. Um, the Pandavas, Arjuna and his brothers, had moments where they completely lost control. That's the nature of the nature of learning to control energy is, is sometimes um, losing control. That's where we sometimes find out where our leaks are. But it's rare with me. It's rare. It's rare. If I have a, temp if I have a day when my temper comes out, um, I, consider that, I consider that I've been tapped out by life. I've been tapped out by circumstance. And I've wasted the day's energy. I've thrown my money or my essence down the drain. So this energy is really precious. It's really important. Um, if you want to see amateurs and you want to see the neophytes, just again look around you. Just look at the people that are insulting, angry, you know, vitriolic, judgmental. They're out there all the time and they act as though they are courageous or they act as though they are brave or they've got a voice, but actually they're just wasting energy. And I know because I did it myself for such a long time and felt righteous about it. But these days I'm more, I'm more concerned with the fact that I want to create fucking amazing things in the world. I want to create a beautiful reality with my energy. I don't want to lose any of it. I contain it. That's the only way I'm able to produce so many books, so many films, so many plays, so many talks, so many mentoring sessions. That's the only way I'm able to contain so much, uh, to create so much in the material world. But not just creating things, but creating things that serve. And not just things that serve, because that can sound wank. I'm talking about things that serve from a muscular stance, from a, mus a muscular position. This service needs to be able to create shapes. It needs to be able to, uh, it needs to be able to align us, you know, to God or align us to love and if that sounds weak it's, it's not it's the equivalent of um, plugging in um, an electrical gadget and connecting it to the whole uh, the whole grid of electricity so if I if I um, if I plug my kettle 
<laughs> or my toaster um, or if I plug my computer into the mains electric it becomes the main electric it becomes the conduit for as much electricity as it can contain so my job is to become a conduit or a utensil that can contain massive amounts of energy and I plug into the mains when I talk about God I talk about plugging into the mains I talk about power but not about me being powerful but about me connecting to power I'm not powerful any more than a torch is powerful without its battery or any more than you know any more than anything is powerful without connecting to some source of um, uh, to some grid so I when I connect to God I connect to the mains grid electric my job then is to become a great conduit a great electrician a great manager of this energy if it's spilling into anger then I know I'm not a sovereign so that means I need to understand my physical and sensual body I need to have control of those I need to recognize that the mind is software it's not me it's software it's just programs growing out of the backboard programs growing out of the substratum and I need to be able to control those programs I need to be able to direct those programs I need to have a sentinel ego a sentinel voice a voice that is the servant to this mains grid electric a servant to the soul a servant to God so I can be an aligned and virtuous conduit and then the, the wrapping that, that goes around this um, powerful conduit is virtue or, you know, if you look at an electrical cable to protect people from that very powerful force that can kill people it's wrapped with plastic so that people can't directly touch the current of electricity our protection around this conduit is virtue that's definite that's unequivocal so we develop virtue we become a we become aligned virtuously so we're working from ethics and morals otherwise we've got this massive amount of energy coming through very damaged and very leaking conduit or very damaged and leaking or misaligned cognition so then that's the difference between a Hitler and a Gandhi a Hitler is bringing this massive energy through a very damaged perception very damaged beliefs with someone like Gandhi you've got him bringing this massive energy through a very aligned very powerful very protected very uh, hermetically sealed conduit and he's coming purely from a perception of love and a perception of healing so any leaks of energy <clears throat> if my leak is jealousy if my leak is anger if my leak is envy or greed or judgment if my, my leak is gossip if I just engage gossip I waste energy if I express gossip I can I can waste a whole days of energy a day of energy so there's no power there there's you know there's um, there's no control there so we look at our life and we we try to observe where the leaks are if I'm working with people if I'm mentoring people I I, I, I'm a seer I'm able to see where they're leaking I'm able to talk to them and listen to them and I can hear and feel and see the leaks then my job is to help those people to seal those leaks so that they, they can perform better in the world so the leaks can be wrong beliefs the, the, re, the leaks can be demons divided thoughts divided beliefs it can be shadows it can be it can be sub personalities that we don't look at that are hidden by defense mechanisms when we when we can locate the leaks we can seal the leaks when we seal the leaks we become a, an aligned powerful conduit so we are contracting we're contracting all of our sub personalities all of our wrong scripts all of our excesses all of our pornography is we're contracting them in order for our conscious net our conscious awareness to expand then we become then we can become great servants of this vast and infinite energy if we are leaking anywhere so if I've got an issue with anger then I'm leaking everywhere because I might have lots of facets that are very positive and I might be doing lots of good things in the world but if I'm, if I'm hiding from a part of me <clears throat> like a bad temper or some kind of hidden addiction my whole reality can be based on 
making a mistake in that one area. So if I've got a very bad temper, which I used to have, I might be a great guy in other areas and I might be doing really well in business and might be a good husband, but I only have to go out one day and lose my temper in the car and hit somebody and kill somebody or be killed, my reality is shattered. Every other area of my reality has been shattered. And if you have got a leak, if you have got an anger leak, a jealousy leak, if you've got a, an envy leak, if you've, got a, if you've got a stealing leak, if you're stealing, say whether you're fiddling, if you're fiddling your taxes and you're stealing, if you're fiddling your taxes and you're lying, they're leaks. This energy that leaks out has a scent. And the vampires, um, people that are looking f to steal energy, will be attracted to that. So you'll start to attract other people that are looking for your essence. So it does two things. The, the leak in essence does three things. It damages people if it breaks out because it's so potent. It attracts vampires, people that want to steal energy, so they'll be attracted to that. And it also creates an inlet for demons or people with divided thoughts. The word demon means divide. So you will find other people who are attracted to the essence and they will climb inside you through that leak. And if they climb, they might climb. That might that might sound um, over dramatic, but it's as, it's as simple as somebody saying um, uh, somebody criticising you unkindly, somebody calling you a name unkindly. If you have a leak, that criticism, that judgment will climb inside you, and it become a part of your flesh. It become a part of your cognition, your perception. So they literally possess you or semi-possess you. So you're carrying around this anger, this rage, this dissonance that somebody has said something bad about you. That's why these people are teachers. If they're climbing inside you and you can't get them out, it's because they're showing you that you've got a leak. So your job then is to, to seal that. You make yourself so virtuous you live so honestly and so purely and you live to serve so much that you become protected against these things. And that's very difficult. We have to recognise that anybody that climbs inside us is shown as a leak. So energy that is damaged, any conduits that are damaged, where the integrity is damaged, where there's leaks, will attract negative people. Um, who who will feed off you and also people that will climb inside you and manipulate you. So we, we find that we, we are vulnerable to the possession of other people's opinions, other people's judgments, other people's views. So uh, you could be having a really good day and you're not aware that you've got a break in the integrity, that you've got an insecurity. Somebody criticises you over the phone and then the rest of your day, the rest of your week is terrible because that person's inside you and maybe you'll hold that person inside you for a year, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. That person continues to abuse you because he's climbed inside a leak in the integrity, stealing essence even when he's not there. So if you have anger, it's much, it's much bigger than just you losing your temper and wasting energy and not having sovereignty. It's, it's big because you are caught in death, you're caught in, de you are caught in uh, danger you're caught in destruction just by having that leak because it will keep attracting people and situations into your life that are going to manipulate and engineer that leak until it's a gaping chasm. So if the temper comes up, if somebody brings your temper up, that person is your teacher. Then we, if we can, and we look at the source of my anger, where does that anger come from? Why is that anger coming out? I'm not going to try and fix the anger at the level of the anger. I'm going to trace that emotion back to the core. What is the belief? Not so much the action or the emotion, but what's the belief behind that anger? What is it, why has it made me angry? I'm going to do the uh, vashishta, the internal inquiry. I'm going to find the cause of the anger, and that's where the leak is. I'm going to, it's, a, it's a longer conversation, but we've got to recognise that anger is showing us that there's a leak and it traces its way back to a core belief. So if you imagine putting an inner tube into water and applying air pressure to see where the leaks are, the bubbles rise up to the surface of the water, don't they? We don't try and fix the leak in the, in the inner tube at the level of the biggest bubble. What we do is the bubbles rise up to the top to allow us to trace them back to find out where the leaks are. So if we've got anger, jealousy, rage, envy, greed, 
you won't fix it at that level that's the biggest bubble that's just it coming to the surface and showing you that below that somewhere below the action below the emotion deep down there is a belief that we need to change my belief was that the world couldn't be trusted that nobody could be trusted um, and that wasn't true but that was my belief when I had my anger, my rage and my jealousy, uh, I was trying to fix those at the level of anger, rage and jealousy, but I couldn't because it didn't exist there. It was illusory. So I traced those actions, those emotions all the way back down. I wrote about it. I talked about it. I did massive internal inquiries to find out why I was so angry, why I was so ashamed, why I was so full of rage, full of vitriol. Why was I so judgmental? I traced those back to the core, to the belief, then I shattered the belief. By the time we get down to the belief, there's nothing much left anyway. The anger, the actions, the anger, the emotions are subterfuge. They're the big bubbles at the top of the water. Got to trace them right back. Lao Tzu, in the Tao Te Ching, said, trace the children, find the children, trace the children back to the mother. When you found the mother, you found the cure. The children are the actions and emotions, the anger. Trace that back to the cause, to the belief, and you found the cure. Um, so anything that leaks, any kind of emotion that leaks is a really good, uh, a really good sign for you to recognise that there is a leak, there is a leak there.